We start the keynote with some awesome stats. 315 million phones were shipped in quarter one of 2014, and Android now has a billion active users who sent 20 billion text messages, took 93 million selfies, and we have it on good authority that 31 million of them contained duck faces. Android users took 1.5 trillion steps and checked their phones 100 billion times, or about 125 times per user per day. The Android tablet market share has increased to 62%, and that's not including the Kindle Fire series. Tablet owners have downloaded 236% more applications than they did at this time last year. Android One was announced as a platform to help emerging markets grow more quickly by creating a standard design using stock Android to make phones that cost like nothing. To demonstrate, they showed a Micro Max device with some pretty decent specs that cost under $100. Matthias Duarte took the stage to talk about the new Android L. No, they did not announce the new L name. The new Android L will have over 5,000 new developer APIs to tap into as well as a new design standard. The Material Design Standard took center stage for pretty much the first hour of the presentation. They showed how you can use Material Design on web, car, wearables, mobile, and tablet to get a truly integrated experience that's consistent across all platforms. Goodbye forever, Hollow. You had a good run. The Material Design utilizes a more 3D interface than before, and it comes with a host of fun transitions and animation features to make everything seem smoother and look more enjoyable and colorful. They also announced Polymer, which is a tool web developers can use to create web apps with the Material Design Standard. You can find more info on all of this at google.com slash design. Next up was more Android L stuff, and they went even deeper into detail about material design and how it'll look in applications like Gmail and the Dialer app. They also went over some of the new features of Android L, which include a much improved notification system that includes notifications on the home screen and heads up notifications that pop up at the top of the display that you can deal with or ignore. Also mentioned is a redesigned recent apps thing that is not only more beautiful, but more functional and makes it easier and more efficient to deal with your open apps. New app indexing allows you to open content in applications instead of in the web, and we kind of knew that was coming, but it also allows for the ability to search for things you had in an app before, which was really cool. The last Android L thing they mentioned was the personal unlocking feature. Using something like your Bluetooth watch or other personal identifying marks, your device will only ask for a pin if it senses that the person holding it isn't you. This is pretty nifty, and it'll get way more awesome once everyone has wearables. There will also be a new factory reset protection mechanism so people don't steal your phone and delete everything. Oh, and there's a new Android keyboard. At this point, it was stated that Android has had third-party keyboard and widget support for four or five years now. We have unconfirmed, unreliable reports that it was at this point in the presentation that Tim Cook started to cry. Okay, I lied. They talked about Android L a whole lot more. The default new runtime will be Art in Android L, and they have tweaked it even more to give apps up to two times the performance, which should effectively take care of app stuttering. They also happened to mention that Art is 64-bit compatible, which is great news. They also worked with ARM, Qualcomm, and NVIDIA to create better handling of graphics, which includes tessellation, various shaders, and a whole lot more. The very last thing they talked about is the battery life. There will now be a new way to monitor battery stats that shows things like wake locks and rogue apps and allows you to more easily identify these things and fix them. They have also redone how apps handle things like network connections, GPS, Bluetooth, and more to help squeeze every last second of battery life. There is also a new built-in battery saver mode should you need that. Next up, they finally announced Android Wear. The LG G Watch, as well as a previously unannounced Samsung Gear Live will be available by the end of the day today, which is great news for you. They demoed Wear to show all the awesome things it's capable of doing. At one point, presenter David Singleton ordered a pizza in under 20 seconds using Android Wear. Awesome. During the demo, they made it very clear that apps, notifications, and Google Now will sync flawlessly between your watch and your phone, so you have full integration with both, which is nice. They also put a pretty big focus on voice control, as you can respond to messages with voice, control many applications with voice, and do a whole lot more with voice. Next, they announced Android Auto and did a demonstration of the kinds of stuff it can do. Like Android Wear, the focal point is voice control. As you can tell, Android Auto to do pretty much anything, and it will do it. Word is that there are over 25 car brands working with Google and Android Auto right now, and some cars should be out by the end of the year that use Android Auto. Next up is Android TV, and we all knew this one was coming. Android TV will come with support for TV tuners, cable TV, and a host of applications and games. There are TVs and set-top boxes from the likes of LG, Sony, Razer, and others due out by the end of this year. The demo shows how you can use the interface, and it turns out that the leaks were correct on this one, so it's actually not all that new, but it's still awesome to see. 
There was a short presentation on the Chromecast. The Chromecast has apparently outsold every other streaming device by a wide margin in most retail outlets worldwide. There were a couple of new features announced, such as the ability to let people stream to your Chromecast without being connected to your Wi-Fi. Don't worry, there are security features in place to give you control of who uses it. Lastly, the Chromecast will soon have the ability to mirror any Android device to your television. As you can see from the demo, the latency is like nothing and it looks really good. Next up is Chrome OS. Some of the awesome features discussed here is the ability to link your phone and your Chrome OS laptop to have a more integrated experience. You can now run Android apps from your phone to your Chrome OS laptop as well as answer phone calls and text messages. Also, it's worth noting that Google Slides is finally out. Google Drive now has unlimited storage for $10 a month, and they are working on data separation and security so you can use your devices as both home and work devices. They did talk very briefly about Google Cloud and how they have worked hard to create a better scaling product for analytics, especially in streaming analytics. They have also worked on developer console upgrades, cloud saving, cloud monitoring, cloud tracing, and a whole lot more. Last up is the application section. Google will be releasing Google Fit in the near future as a way to help people get healthier. Google Fit will be available on practically every device running Android L, which will include wearables, phones, and tablets. Along with that, Google is now working to make testing applications easier, and they have announced that they have joined with Apurify to do just that. Google Play Games is the fastest growing game network on the face of this planet currently and soon we'll see new gamer profiles, saved games inside of the Google Play Games application, and new APIs will be launched to help game developers integrate better with Google, Android, Google Play Games, and Android TV. Well, that's the keynote in a nutshell. Head on over to AndroidAuthority.com to see more information on pretty much all of these things, and stay tuned to the Android Authority YouTube channel for more Google I.O. goodness. Once again, I'm Joe Hendy. Thanks for watching, everybody, and have a wonderful day.